So the question is, what's the story for Voice of the People? The urban renewal controversies around the construction of Truman College were the real origin. So Voice rose as a reaction to that. They had grandiose plans, you know, a literally one-for-one -one replacement of the housing that was being destroyed. That never got built. So they got involved in the more um, slow but important work of preserving one building at a time. We moved from a tenant organizing group to one that began doing management of apartment buildings and eventually development. Voice of the People came into being at a time when Uptown was undergoing uh, a plague of arson, when major developments like Truman College were still a figment of downtown imagination, but landlords were taking advantage of tenants, and the voice was right in the middle of that. In 1976, the increasingly organized, unified, and determined multiracial community of Uptown, a multiracial community in the most segregated city in the world of Chicago, um, organized the first of 15 annual survival days uh, on the mall here, where we said, we're gonna at least one day in the year claim this mall as a place that is the community's own, where people can gather together in peace, where people can have a good time. And let me just say that the political machine um, and the district commander at the time had predicted disaster, and we showed that that community could take the mall and hold it for a day and make it a model of people living together in peace. The time I was at Voice in the early 80s, Voice had begun doing housing development. From its organizing roots in the 70s, they had begun to develop buildings, six flats. But I don't think Voice ever forgot its roots in organizing, in community empowerment, and an understanding that it wasn't really housing development that was the heart of the work. It was empowering the community. It was allowing Uptown the residents of Uptown, the current residents of Uptown, to have a say in the development of Uptown. I have always had a soft spot in my heart for Voice of the People because my grandmother was my first um, introduction into VOP. She was um, a member, one of the first to move into the building on Hazel and Sunnyside. Um, so she really fought side by side with them, even when they were um, trying to boycott Truman from being built. I remember being on picket lines, plenty of uh, coloring in the corner while radicals were making change uh, at the table. So I literally have been the product of Voice of the People for tw I'm 29, 29 years now. This additional housing that was, was preserved or rehabbed or built over the course of the 70s, 80s, and 90s that took advantage of city, state, and federal dollars to create additional affordable housing. Vintage buildings can become community anchors for their respective communities. One of Voice's signal achievements has been to preserve diversity in a neighborhood that's been under enormous pressure for decades now. You had people from Appalachia, African Americans who'd been displaced from the Cabrini Green area, and people from Southeast Asia all living together in Voice of the People housing. It was a really heady and, and uh, wonderful mix of people. Voice of the People were the developers, and, and so uh, I, we raised, my wife and I, we raised three 
kids who are now young adults and, and uh, you know, prosperous citizens in, in Chicago. We are very good at building and developing and maintaining sometimes for 20-year uh, periods or 30-year periods, often tied to kind of tax credits and some of the subsidies and incentives that the government provides us. But eventually there is always the risk or threat of that housing then being lost to the affordable housing sector. The whole struggle to develop some of the, save some of the high rises along the lakefront um, so really, a, you know, pretty uh, steady increase in capacity running all the way into the 1990s. And I think at the end of the day, people want a safe house and they want to live their lives. One of the hallmarks of Voice of the People, which has been a tension, has been to live in the space between family and being very informal and community oriented and still trying to run a business and pay the rent. Um, and that's, I think, that's a good tension. That's a good struggle. And, you know, Voice has occupied that space for decades now and is still figuring it out. So, no, I, I think it's a good legacy.